The four categories of vehicles are subdivided into different classes, each with their own technical and mechanical standards. The high-end T1 improved cross-country vehicles lead the way in technical quality and innovation. Like in Formula One, these cars are custom-built from scratch. And the top teams such as Peugeot, Mini and Toyota leave no detail to chance, rebuilding their vehicles every year in a bid to craft the perfect rally car. All the evolutions of the car has never, never finished. You can always improve the car. You can always work in suspension, work in the engine. It is a never-ending never story. You always keep working, you always keep improving. The most important components of a rally raid car are determined by the extreme conditions encountered during a race. These cars run a special double suspension setup which has huge amounts of travel to absorb the obstacles found across such different terrains while still hitting speeds of 200 km an hour. For the race engineers, one key question has to be answered, whether to go with two-wheel drive or 4x4. Four four. A vehicle that supplies power to all four of its wheels. Four-wheel drive vehicles are definitely king of the off-road, but organisers level the playing field by affording two-wheel drive cars a little more wiggle room within the regulations. Normally it's more four-wheel drive, but we decided to go ahead for two-wheel drive because we believe it's a good concept. The car is lighter than uh, the four-wheel drive and we have more travel of suspension. We have about uh, 40, 45 centimetres of travel of suspension. We are allowed to get bigger wheels. Bike riders get to swerve the drivetrain configuration topic altogether. And though bikes are undoubtedly the toughest vehicles with which racers try to tame the terrain, many of today's car drivers, including Cyril Day Prey, started their rally raid career on only two wheels. It's much more physical to handle the bike, staying glued to the handlebar the whole day. This was a big difference between bike and car. Unlike a normal bike, a rally raid bike requires a few more tweaks and a bit more tampering. So the main part with the, the rally bike that's really different to any motocross bike is the navigation tower for us. This is pretty much the most important thing we need. We need a lot of fuel on board, so we have one tank that's at the rear and two tanks at the front. In total, we can get about 34 litres on board on this bike. Underneath the motor, on the bash plate, we have a water tank. This is a compulsory thing we need to have. We can use this water to repair the bike and then basically yeah, fill our radiators back up. Or if yeah, we're in a lot of trouble and we're stuck and stranded out the desert, we can also use this for drinking water. Quads are small but powerful vehicles and are hugely popular, even though they're relatively new to the sport. The number of riders in the quad category increases every year. Somewhat bigger than the quads are the trucks. These beasts weigh eight tonnes and roar along to the tune of 1,000 horsepower. Their top speed is limited to 160 kilometres an hour to prevent them overtaking the cars. You might be wondering how a truck with that much power and, more importantly, that much weight is able to take the abuse of the Dakar Rally. Well, if you look in here, you'll find the answer. It's a fully adjustable double damper setup with 300 millimetres of travel, and that's what allows these things to do things like this. Now, in the back of a normal truck, you might find frozen fish or sandwiches. I don't know, not the case here. Excuse me. This is a large box, and there's also another one which is normally mounted here, which is filled with spare parts when the crews are out on the stages. Up here, you have a 60-litre air tank, which is feeding the air brakes. And over here, two more 30-litre air tanks, which is doing the same job. Just take a look at the size of this tyre. Now, believe it or not, this thing weighs 150 kilograms and is 1.2 metres across. They can adjust the pressure inside the tyre. They reduce that pressure over soft, sandy surfaces to get more grip, and on hard surfaces, they increase the pressure to get less friction and be able to go quicker. Now, unlike in a car where there's just a co-driver and a driver, in a truck, there's actually three people. In this seat is the mechanic, here is the co-driver or navigator, and obviously where I am is the driver. Trucks not only race in their own class, but they also carry out a vital role, support. 
Rally raid rules state that only registered competitors are allowed to help each other out during a race, so many teams enter their support trucks into this category. The Russian Kamaz team dominates the truck category. Engine manufacturers by day, Kamaz employees double up as racing team members and their trucks are tested under the toughest, most extreme conditions.